Yeah, right. doing my friend uh, not my typical time to be getting on but burritos have been delayed so we're finally getting a chance to do them all right so we're getting ourselves set up of course you know the trucks are wrecked so I got to do some cleaning Get myself in the proper summertime attire. Nice uh, summer shorts. Uh, uh. This past week has not been a whole lot of fun. It started off in Florida, ended up here in Iowa, and Hopefully the next load doesn't suck as much, but that's never a guarantee anyway. So I don't know why I, why I complain, but I do. All right, now to get myself comfy. All right, got there, got out the way. Here we go. Ah. So, we made our delivery today of our load up in, uh, up in Minnesota, and we came back down south to Waterloo, Iowa. We got a tractor to pick up tomorrow going out to Walla Walla, Washington. Hans Google, how you doing, sir? Thanks for coming in. Over in Wisconsin. I can just get this stupid thing to work for me. That'd be nice. Well, I am here in Waterloo, Iowa. I ain't been in Wisconsin in... I don't know how long it's been since I've been in Wisconsin. Let's see. Almost a year since I've actually been in Wisconsin. I've done one load in my trucking career into Wisconsin. Nope, sorry. Two deliveries into Wisconsin, one pickup out of there as well. So we're getting our little table set up here. Just fits right between the... Uh, the curtain here behind the driver's seat and the uh, and the bed. Uh, yes. Ah, uh, see, I'm right off of. Uh, I'm right off of 380 right now. Here in Iowa, near on Waterloo, Iowa. So that's about, it's about 100 miles, 115 miles down to Iowa 80. Uh, and it's about 140 miles, road miles, up to I-90. So we're kind of right in that, that section right there, right in between. Uh, US, 3, or US 63 is the typical way I'll, I'll probably be taken up. But we'll see what the permits... <laughs> see what the permits uh, actually allow me to do. It should not be a problem here in Iowa because I have a an annual permit for Blackhawk County, which I'm in, and also a, a, a statewide Iowa permit. So 
as an annual permit as well. So I can pretty much go anywhere I want as long as I don't hit anything. Unless they give me an actual, unless some, some kind of restrictions put on. But rarely does they, have they done that so far, so I'm not too, uh, too worried about it. So we are going to be doing our... We're going to be doing a, uh, our, our, our ground beef mixture for the burritos here in our uh, Instant Pot, my three-quart Instant Pot. But we got to get a, a few things set up before we even start this, to attempt that. One, we have a power cord, and I do have a second bowl for the Instant Pot. Just makes things easier. This is a stainless steel one. The one that's in here right now is a non-stick version, which for some things like rice and certain things that that would be a little more more sticky, this works a little bit better. We got some tortillas up here. I got some lettuce, some green onion. Some red and green bell pepper. I have some white onion up here. Garlic, ground beef. I got all my spices. Uh, I did not pick up any Spanish rice. I was trying to pick up some black beans. But the only thing they had was like huge cans of black beans. I wasn't going to eat them all. And... Uh, I wasn't, like I said, I'm not going to buy a big one. If I got a smaller one, I would have. Well, Mr. Hans, yeah, go ahead. Ask whatever you want. I mean, I, it, that's the only thing I can give you is an opinion. There's very few things that I actually know factually. And even then, I'll try to defer to somebody who knows maybe better than I. But, you know, like I said, we will. Let me turn those on as well. I'll do my best to give you an answer that hopefully is satisfactory. <clears throat> Just trying to straighten things up here. <clears throat> so, of course, everybody's talking about the stupid freaking virus. Oh my God, the world's going to end because of the virus. Oh my God, everybody's buying the toilet paper. Oh, everybody's doing this. Everybody's doing this. They're shutting this down. They're shutting that down. My opinion on that is everybody's overreacting to such an amazing extent. It's ridiculous. All right. There we go. Uh, no, I haven't seen that at all. I mean, I got here to the Fly J, Evansdale, Iowa. <clears throat> I got here a little bit after 3 p.m. The showers here were full. Nobody's not taking a shower. I had to wait almost half an hour to get a shower. I... If anybody's talking about that, I don't, I don't know where they're getting their information from because I got my shower. I mean, there's there's uh, I think it's eight sh or six showers at this particular truck stop, I believe, and every single one was full. There's no reason not to. I mean, when they go in and clean, they spray a disinfectant in there. Then they wipe everything down. You know, it's no different than walking outside. It's no different than walking, you know, walking around in the it, it, Like I said, to me, it's all overblown. Everybody's overreacting to something that. I want to be frank. I think amounts to the sniffles. 
Hey, Mr. Ross, how you doing, sir, from uh, from England? Do appreciate you. Hopefully, this uh, this uh, cooking of the burrito is something that keeps you entertained for at least for a couple minutes. <laughs> Gonna try. All right, so we got our load delivered today. Came back down here, got parked, got the shower, did one load of laundry. I still got to fold that, put that away, but worry about that later. All right. So, but we got another load already assigned before I got this load off, this last load off, which was nice. So I am going from Waterloo, Iowa. I'm taking a 38 or an 8345R John Deere tractor from Waterloo, Iowa to Walla Walla, Washington. Ugh, pardon me. All right. I didn't make the bed, so let me. There, bed's made. <laughs> Sometimes it's easy as that. Just throw it over there. So we have, it's about, in total, it's about 1,800 mile run. We are going to be approximately 10 foot wide, which necess necessitates permits. We're going to be approximately 14.4 high, approximately. I'm going to try to get that as low as I can. That's going to make things a little bit easier, but... We, we just got to see what we uh, what what happens when we actually get it on the truck we get it we get it secured and uh, and we see what our height is actually going to be lots of extra trash bags now I wanted to talk about a product that I bought I saw it on Facebook. I don't often buy things that are advertised, advertised on Facebook, but I was intrigued. I said, you know, let me let me give it a try. You know, 20, 30 bucks, let me give it a try. But this is the box that came in, and you can see there by the name, it's called Flock, as in a bird. These are chicken chips. So basically deep fried chicken skins made to be like a, a, a potato chip alternative. Was it a bag like that? Now, I have not been impressed with it myself. I'm going to open one up here. I'm going to trash bag here. So, But we're going to take a look at this. So it comes in a little, what is this? One ounce bag, 28 grams. Chicken chips, basically fried chicken skin. Blah, blah, blah. 180 calories, zero grams of carbohydrate, zero sugar, 13 grams of protein. And let's see what. Total fat, uh, 14 grams. Now, they looked interesting. I've made this at home before, you know, chicken skin left over, you know, fry it up so it's nice and crispy like a chip. These are, hey, there we go. How you doing, sir? So these are, like I said, not worth the money as far as I'm concerned, but let's take a look at them. Let's see if I can get this one. Try to make sure these are clear. So, Mr. Walter, how are you doing, sir? <laughs> um, we are good. We are good. Dan the man, how you doing? So, this is what they look like. You know, not exactly appealing. So they're all shriveled up in uh, really small pieces. You know. What what you want me to <laughs> I 
<laughs> All right, I'm trying to do something here, Walter. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> All right, so, so these had a good idea from my perspective, but they just were not executed properly. They're basically fried chicken skin, but they're all just, you know, they're like a fist. They weren't, you know, spread out like this. They just threw them in there, and they just stick. They don't cook up like pork rinds do. You throw a pork rind in there, they swell up. These, they just, like, shrivel up into, like, a little ball. And it wasn't worth, it wasn't worth the money, so. I may use it as, like, a topping seasoning, but, but other than that, I would not. I would not make a recommendation for flock chicken chips. <laughs> JB hey, Dogs, how you doing, sir? So we hey, have hey, all right, brother. I'll be, I'll be right, right back. back. All right, sir. So we are making burritos. It's like we're going to be using the instant pot to cook. Because I could do it in a pan like I normally do it, but this will will suffice. This is a three quart uh, cooking vessel. This is a non stick insert. Here's the stainless steel insert. I have I have a spare. I could use this, but we're gonna have so much fat in the uh, in the mix. We're going to uh, just use a stainless steel. Set that bad boy in there. So we got two pounds of ground beef. Now, after I do the ground beef, I'm going to make me a basically a pulled pork, uh, you know, recipe for the burritos as well. So I can have burritos all week long. But this one's going to be done a little bit later because I got to do this a nice slow cooker style, have it just shred apart all the good, all the spices you can want. But we're going to be doing this later. This is two and a half pound uh, pork boneless pork sirloin roast. So we'll be doing that later on. So in our we have we have seventy three twenty seven ground beef. We're going to use some Classico tomato and basil sauce. We're going to be adding a good chunk, a good bit of garlic. And of course, lots and lots of spices. Well, some spices, I mean. Of course, you've got a tail of this for what you like, but... Right, here's this is what I'm going to be doing. So a little bit of chili powder. We got some red pepper flake. We got some Italian seasoning. We got some black pepper. We got a bit of white onion going into the uh, going into the sauce, into the uh, meat mixture. And that, that's going to be the primary ingredients here. So we're not doing anything super fancy. Uh, we're just gonna do something simple that's gonna that, that'll give me I don't know six or seven burritos easy and of course the trucks are wrecked because the last couple days I've not really been in a mood to do anything that's why I'm doing this on a on a Tuesday instead of a Sunday like I should have like I wanted to So we got this plug, our, our Instant Pot plugged in, and we want to do, we're going to put this on saute. 
Anyway, put that at 20 minutes. We're not going to be putting the lid on this. As you know, we're just basically using it as a cooking pot. So let's find us a. Uh, Knew that fell down there. So, get a couple of uh, utensils out here. And I forget where I put things. I forget where I put things. Oh, here we go. Where I put one thing. Here we go. Just gotta stick some. We, unfortunately, you gotta move things around because everything gets you know messed up. All right, so we got a knife out. We're gonna take a uh, little tray here to put things onto as needs be. Got ourselves a nice old big cutting board, and we're just gonna do this as we normally do. You know. Because we don't have that much room, we're going to throw it where, as we can. So we're going to be using, that's about a tennis ball size. We got about seven eighths of that. Let's throw that down there. Get on there. So we're not trying to be super fancy about it. We're just trying to get it cut. And if it's a little bit rough, there's a bit more onion here. A little smaller piece there. I really don't mind. I have more onion, more of this yellow onion up in the basket here. I'm just going to take that. A little bit of sizzle, not too bad. Come on off there. Throw that in there. All right, so we are done with this for the moment. Just going to set that right there. Just gonna use a pair of togs to stir. Hey, fairy wire, how you doing? Hopefully everything's going a little bit better for you now that you're moving again. We're just gonna kind of sweat these uh, onions a bit. We're gonna take a little bit of. We're using got a regular knife here. D Dub, how you doing? Exactly, and you could do both at the same time. I mean, I'm sitting on the bed right now, pillows right here. Lay back and you know, chow down. So we're gonna take a uh, a good scoop of uh, garlic and a little bit more. Why not? We ain't gonna worry about hurting anybody's feelings in here. Got some of the Italian seasoning. Put a little bit of herbs in there. There we go. We're just gonna cut this uh, meat up or open. Just like toothpaste, just squeeze it in. Now, I'm making a little bit more than I normally do for the simple fact that I want to make sure I have a, a bit over a longer period of time. So, normally I would do just one pound. Let's throw that in there. But I feel like doing two pounds. 
And then on top of that, I'm going to do that pork sirloin roast. And I could do that tomorrow. Well, Dan, I still haven't grown up. I'm almost 50 years old. So, you live the dream. <laughs> well, I'm in a Peterbilt 389. 18 speed. I do primarily heavy haul, uh, tractors, construction equipment, farm equipment, and then of course those in between loads, anything that I can, that they'll give me to stick on here. So. Woo! That's starting to smell like burritos already. Gonna chop that up a little bit. Get some of the onions up on top, get some of that meat on the bottom. All right, here we go. Now I just need a couple of wipes. Here we go. So nor as I normally do. Like I because I know I cook in the truck. Yep. Yeah. While well, I'm driving the Eaton Fuller 18, uh, I got a 48 foot step deck. I got a X15 Cummins engine at 500 horsepower and 1,850 pounds of torque. Put this away just to be a little bit safer. Let's stick that right there. It's a 280 inch wheelbase, a smallish sleeper, you know, for my purposes. But, yep, just like this. I'm driving a 389, so just one generation, you know, one uh, model after that. Same exact styling. Hey, Mr. Otis, how you doing, sir? Thanks for coming in. Mr. Huber, how you doing? So, that's clean. Stick that right there. Clean off our knife we use for the uh, for that. I never, hey Dan, I never wanted to do tow trucks or tanker. That's just way too much work for me. Those guys do that, uh, you know, that they, they go above and beyond, you know, especially out in that weather. Don't I don't want to do that anymore. I did that enough. <laughs> All right. So getting this meat ground. Getting all that stuff incorporated. All right, so we're going we're doing good. All right, so we're going to add a bit of black pepper. I think that might be enough. If we want to add more later, we'll add a little bit more later. I don't know what I did with my chili powder. All right, we got a little bit of red pepper flake. Just to give it a little touch of spice. Ah, here we go. Your standard McCormick chili powder. Oh, yeah. Just give a couple squeezes of that. Get that in there. Try to get that nice and even in there. Let it work its magic. The only problem I have with this particular ground beef, it's too 
fine of a grind. I wish it was a little bit more, a little bit more coarse, but there you go. There. Oh yeah. Well, and that's the thing, Otis, that I talk about a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of times when I'm doing the cooking. It's a, it's healthy because I control every little bit that goes in here. B, I make it the way I want it, not somebody else's interpretation of what a burrito is. You know, I don't mind going to Taco Bell and getting their their beef and bean burrito. I don't mind going to Moe's and getting their beef and bean, you know, their burritos. But when I want burritos the way I want them, I take the time to make them. And like I said, I'm going to be much more satisfied with it in the long run. And and like I said, I'm going to get more for actual less. Per burrito, I'm going to pay less than I would at any restaurant. Yeah. And Otis, or Dub, a pork sirloin rub roast. I'm going to be doing this in the Instant Pot here as well. A nice, good four or five hour, six hour slow cook as I'm working tomorrow. This will be going into burritos as well. So, this will be getting used. <laughs> and I also have some pretty good barbecue sauce. This KC Masterpiece Classic 816. I'm actually impressed with this barbecue sauce. I did a, a, a chicken a, no, a, a chicken thigh and, and, and just squirt this on there on the panini grill. Kevin Hart. Glad to have you in. So, you know, I was I, I was trying to find the Jack Daniels uh, uh, classic number seven barbecue sauce. They, that No place had it. So I, I picked this up and said, I'm going to give this a try. Casey Masterpiece is typically pretty safe, you know, for not being too wild one way or the other. This is actually pretty good. It, it's it's pretty good cold. It's pretty good just warmed up, and it's pretty good when you when you really cook it down and you make a glaze out of it. It really does a pretty good job. All right, our ground beef is almost done. I'm just gonna set that out the way. So now we're going to take some Classico tomato and basil. This is my kind of go-to pasta sauce. Oh my God, this one's good. So tomatoey, so, you know, it makes you think of Italy. Well, funny you should say that, Otis. I just bought my sister. My sister has the six quart Instapot. I just bought her the air fryer lid that fits on that. The first thing she did was chicken. <laughs> she did air fryer chicken in the Instapot with the new air fryer lid that attaches to it. Unfortunately, they do not make the three quart version, which is what I have here. If I try to have a, a six quart on the truck, I mean that's just too much space. Three quart does fine. So we're gonna take this. That was about a quarter, a quarter of a jar. I'll clean this out later with something else to cook because that's that's way too much left in the jar for me to waste. So I'll probably put that in a soup. Hey, B Blood, how you doing, sir? Didn't see ya. Been a while since I uh, <coughs> since I'm dying of the coronavirus myself. 
<laughs> now I'm doing fine. I just got the uh, the the change in weather sniffles that I often get. So, like I said, put that garlic away. I think we have we uh, we don't need any more of that. Now also putting putting a little bit of this into a chicken soup along with some of this makes the chicken soup so much better. Well, thank you, Otis. I appreciate that. I just do what I know how to do, and hopefully it does benefit. Hey, D-Dub, have a good night, sir. Thank you for coming in. I do appreciate it. So, you now it just comes in like a toothpaste tube. It adds a little bit more sweetness, a little more richness. You don't need a lot of it, but it does, does a pretty good job. All right. Now, it's not particularly going to look that rich as far as being red is concerned, but yeah. we're basically just going to let that boil, you know, to thicken it up a little bit. I like a lot of fat. I like it when my burrito is dripping fat out of it. I know I'm getting all the flavor I can out of it. Now, unfortunately, I do not have any refried beans. I do not have any rice. I do not have any black beans. I don't have anything that's a bit more substantial to fill in it, fill, fill, to, you know, fill the burrito up with. But we will make do. All right, so. Put that on the floor there. All right. So instead of putting the Instapot lid on, because trying to clean that out on the inside there, a little bit more thing. I got a universal lid for all my pots and pans. I'm just gonna throw that on there like that. Does the same exact thing, just a little bit neater, a little bit easier to clean, a little bit faster. All right, so uh, what do I need now? I need some brains. Is what I need. Oh, so we need another onion. I still am doing some organiz a lot of organization, so there's still things I don't have quite in the right place. And you no, know, no, that onion looks like crap. These onions, I think I got a bad batch of onions because these ones are, yeah, that does, I'm sorry, that looks terrible. I'm not, I'm not even going to waste my time with them. Now, this one looks a lot better. Yeah, I think I got me a bad batch of onions. Whatever. All right, so, stick that in there. Cutting board. We're just going to take a, uh, little bowl like this, get my knife out, and if it appears that I'm just being a slob and throwing things on the floor, well, that's in essence what I'm doing because I'm a slob. There, there you go. So we're just going to use this cardboard box here to throw our, 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 our stuff into, so. All that skins and off in there. Throwing the box away anyway, so might as well make it useful to me at the moment. All right. So a little bit of white onion or yellow onion. We're just gonna slice this. Nope. And this is part of the uh, filling. For our burrito and since we are I'm making enough to last me a week I could pre-slice all this put in some freezer bags oh. 
Okay. They forgot it beeps when it when it gets to a, a certain point. So we're just going to hit the uh, keep warm button, and that'll hold it pretty much at the temperature a little bit longer. So like I said, you know, we're, we're cutting all this onion here for a week. Now, we're not just, I'm not going to eat all this whole onion with everything else that I'm, that, I'm, that I'm having for dinner all at once. You know, that's, that's a good week's worth of onion right there for burritos with the beef mixture and also that pork that I'm going to be making as well. So I'm going to set that off to the side there, I think. Then we do the same thing. We got some green bell pepper and just gonna go in and just not be pretty about it. Just rip it out of there. Okay, there we go. Now remember. These are peppers. They are related to chilies. So if you want a little bit more of the spiciness or the acrid taste from a bell pepper, make sure you leave this membrane in and leave the seeds in. But I want this to be a little bit more of the sweet aspect. So I'm going to take some of that membrane out. Yes, don't judge me about my knife technique because... I'm not a professional chef. I have no inclination to be one. I just eat like I'm like I know what I'm doing. <coughs> uh, no, sir. This instant pot is a regular plug. Just like this. This is to my microwave. My printer runs off a regular. 112 volt, 120 volt, 110 volt plug. I have an inverter down here. I have an APU uh, outside running. So it's constantly producing power. I'm not running off the batteries. My unit right here controls my AC, controls my heat, controls my power. So there you go. Yes, I have all my fingers. <laughs> The first thing I ever learned about, about handling a knife is one, how to sharpen it. A sharp knife is less dangerous to a person than a dull knife. The second thing I learned was how to properly carry a knife. The third thing I learned was how much force to put on a knife while you're using it. And that's where people, they, they do not learn that fine control of a knife. Now, I don't claim to be Mr. Perfect when it comes to that regard, but going on 50 years of life, and I managed not to kill myself with knives, chainsaws, circular saws, all kinds of drills and everything else. So I, I know a little bit. Like I said, we got we got a green bell pepper. We have a red bell pepper. Put a little bit of color in there. I'm just gonna rip that out there. There's seeds out the way. All right, let's check our our beef here. Let it, let it, let some of that meat actually absorb some of that fat back into itself, at least a little bit. All right, there we go. So, like I said, but the thing, the topic that I really wanted to talk about today, besides burritos 
which unfortunately is the big topic of the entire world, the virus. And it just amazes me how much people are overreacting. I mean, you know, they... I guess because I've never... I'm a fairly rational person. I don't... You know, when there's an actual emergency... You know, I'm calm. I'm cool. I deal with the emergency as it happens. And then once everything is being taken being taken care of, then I my emotional state ramps up and I react. Uh, uh, an example is when I was an arborist, tree surgeon, tree trimmer, however you want to call it. You know, that's, that's one of the most dangerous jobs in the world. Well, we had a gentleman who cut himself with his chainsaw pretty severely. Now, at the moment, I knew you know, I had a ba basic first aid training in the Boy Scouts and in life. So I knew what to do at the moment. Try to keep people calm, try to get things done that need to be done. And then wait, you know, do your basic triage and, 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 and you know, deal with it. You know, just get things taken care of. Don't worry about people's feelings. Don't worry about their attitudes or anything. I just do what needs to be done. If you need to punch somebody in the face to knock them out so they'll stop panicking so you can do what you need to do, you know, that's what you do. Well, like I said, attend to this guy's wounds as best as I could with what medical, you know, equipment we had on the truck. You know, tourniquets, band-aid, you know, bandages, gauze, uh, alcohol, splints. You know, medical tape, whatever we could to, to staunch this pretty serious chainsaw, you know, wound. Well, you know, after about 15, 20 minutes, the uh, ambulance arrives, the emergency medical techs, the EMT showed up, paramedics, whatever you want to call them, get the guy bundled up, get him into the, uh, into the uh, into the ambulance and on the way. Well, after the adrenaline level settles down, then the reality of the situation gets me. I'm off on the side in the bushes there, wrenching my guts out. I I was I was not able to. I mean, not just figuratively, literally. I was not able to function for about 48 hours. I was just, bam. The emotion, all the emotional waves just crashed right down on me and just laid me out. Hey, Gina, how you doing? Thanks for coming in. But, you know, but when you have a situation like this with this pandemic, and all these government agencies overreacting, all these, you know, companies overreacting, people in America wearing face masks, wearing gloves, walking into the truck stop, acting like they're going to die. I don't understand that. You know, it, 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 it's just, it, 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 it's, it's kind of inconceivable for to me to to act that way. Now, I grew up in Japan. You know, during the late 70s and the majority of the 80s. I'm accustomed 
to people walking around with face masks on, with a surgical mask, just so they don't spread disease. They have a cough, they put a mask on, they go out and do their business. I'm used to that. In Japan, I'm used to it. Here, it's like, what are you doing out and about? That's not our culture. I mean, and what do you think uh, that simple little mask that you would use for painting, or if you have a small cough, how do you think that's going to stop a virus? Those masks that everybody's putting on and wearing now do nothing. You know, I, I, I see these things and I wonder to myself, why? What do you think you're achieving with that? It does, you know, it just, you know, boggles my mind. I, I, I just, I just don't understand, you know, that mentality. Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to be, I'm going to be so safe. I'm going to put on some gloves. I'm going to dress in a nice big old bunny suit and all that jazz. And, but I'm still going to go out in public. The way I deal with it is, A, I'm naturally an introverted person anyway. I only get out of the truck when I have to. <laughs> I just don't deal with the people, period. So, you know, it, 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 just, it just strikes me as funny that, that the same people who are, who are panicking over this are doing some of the uh, it's kind of that you know I'll say one thing but do another you know it, it's just odd you know it, it just strikes me as weird okay so we have butter leaf lettuce hydroponically grown here it just says greenhouse grown but more than likely hydroponically grown because a lot of lettuce nowadays is. It's just faster and easier. So we're going to take a couple leaves of this off. And for my money, butter leaf lettuce is one of the, the healthiest, most nutrient-rich lettuces out there. Now, that's not saying much for lettuce, but you know, I think it has a good flavor. I mean, I, I prefer iceberg lettuce. Nice and fresh, crunchy, cold. I love that lettuce. But this lettuce, very close second, so there you go. So we're going to cut this fairly thin. And I like, a, I like a little bit of, of actual texture to my food. So, you know, I'm not going to cut it so thin that it's, you know, the thickness of the blade of this knife. You know, like they do with, uh, you know, certain other, you know, things. You know, like when you go to, uh, you know, Burger King and whatnot, they're not, or McDonald's, they're not giving you as much, you know, a good solid leaf of lettuce these little wispy strands it's like come on you know all right let's throw this up again now this does have a lot of fat this is 73 27 hamburger which is a very high fat content all right so I'm going to put a little bit of water in here later just to keep the humidity high for it, keep it as fresh as I can. But for right now, I'm going to stick that out of the way. Now we're going to do a little bit of green onion. So we're just going to take a couple pieces off there, throw that down there. I wish I had an, an actual refrigerator. It had a, a, a vegetable crisper in there, but no such luck. Not in this truck. All right, so I'm going to slice this this way here. Try to slice some of these leaves long ways to thin them out a little bit.
we go. And this is going into the uh, hamburger mixture. We just did two stalks of uh, of the green pep of the green onion. I'm going to stick that down there for the moment. Trying to place to set everything. There we go. Put that up there. We'll wash that. Wash that. All right. So here we got our vegetables. We got some. Uh, yellow onion, we got our, la our, our lettuce, red and green bell pepper, I could have got a yellow one as well, but I didn't want to uh, see I'm being uh, a little bit overboard with it, <laughs> All right, now, no hamburger, that's the problem living in a truck, hot dog buns crushed, All right. Let's see if I can find my tortillas. Yeah, here we are. Bam. Little, uh, what are these, about 8-inch flour tortillas. This is La Banter Banderita flour tortillas. Ten tortillas in here. Hermetically sealed for your protection. All right. So first things first, we're going to clean up our other tools here because I don't need them anymore. So we're going to clean them up and put them away. I said, these uh, disinfectant hand wipes, Clorox, Lysol, whatever. So we're just clean that off there. Yes, I am using a paper towel to, to, uh, to clean them off, to dry them off. Because all my towels are still, half of them are dirty, half of them are, uh, half of them are uh, just need to be folded. Because I just got back from doing the laundry. That off a little bit. There we go. So one thing clean. Put that out the way. Some things just gotta say screw it. I'm just gonna throw it up there. All right, so I'm just going to that, turn that up right side up so it's not leaking any water or any steam anywhere. All right. I hope you can see that. A little bit of green onion in there, too. We're just going to stir that all together. Yellow onion, ground beef, red pepper flake, chili powder. Black pepper, some Classico tomato and basil pasta sauce, Amore tomato paste, 7327, you know, lean to fat uh, hamburger. Just grind it all up, pull it all together. Uh, I've never been one to steam a bread of any kind. Well, thank you, Mr. Hart. I, it's just the standard microphone on the uh, on the MacBook. So there you go. So we got a hot plate here. Don't touch that while it's uh, on. Always a good tip. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like I said, I still have a lot of things that I want to do to uh, to make the uh, truck a livable thing. It's a con, but it's constantly a learning process. So we got a standard nonstick pan. There we go. We're just gonna do one tortilla at a time because because I said so. So we're not trying to uh, cook the tortilla. Basically, it's just to get it, to warm it up, to make it more pliable. 
it's like I said, it's not it's not a fancy meal by any stretch of the imagination, but it's up it's one of those meals that I have always liked for a long, long time. And when you especially when you have children and you can they can you know, you have all your 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 vegetables and your meats and all your little condiments laid out in, in like in a buffet style and they get to do it themselves. Children especially love a meal like this. <laughs> well, they're not pinatas. There's nothing good going to come from them. I forgot I had them from the last time I made chili dogs. So those are getting tossed. You know, now I need a plate. We'll use one of our fancy, our fancy uh, plates here. You no know, ceramic. Now, I'm sorry about the glare, the, the the lighting in here. This sucks. I don't have a nice uh, studio like Ross or Mr. Kevin Hart. <laughs> All right, gonna turn that off. That is nice and hot and warm through. Bing, bang, bam. Of course, it turns it invisible almost, so there you go. Right. I need a spoon. You know, I got a spoon right here. There we go. One of them fancy kitchen tools that too many truck drivers never have on their truck. A real spoon. They'll have the plastic things just because they got that from their little takeout. Well, before I do that, I forgot probably one of the number one ingredients you need to have. Now if I can just find it. Yeah, here we go. Now, of course, it would not be Mexican without some good English cheddar cheese. Where would where would Tex Mex be without English cheese? <laughs> well, Mike, I didn't hear you knocking. <laughs> so, like I said, we're gonna little be be bit of meat on there. There we go. We're not gonna. We're not going to really do this up too much. So, a little bit of meat. Some good English, quote unquote, cheddar. <laughs> it's not a Stilton, but it'll do, right? So, we got raw onion. We got cooked onion. So, a little bit of cheese, a little bit of, dang, that light is harsh. A little bit of that. Touch of lettuce. A little bit of red pepper. A little bit of green pepper. And now, hopefully, we're not going to be like the, the, the restaurants rolling it up nice and tight and bundling it in. We're just going to take one, two, and three. Just roll it up like that. Now, nice and hot. A simple, and you see the, uh, the fat dripping out the bottom? That's when you know it's good. Now the trick, pardon me, when you're in a truck, it's not spilling all over your bed. <laughs> now 
That's probably the number one rule. You take that kind of foul language out of here, Mike. Almost as good as Taco Bell. How dare you? <laughs> Taco Bell has its place. And unfortunately, last night, it had its place in my belly because I was just so aggravated with the day, I didn't even want to cook. So... So, I'll have two, maybe three of these tonight. I have a full Instapot over here. That's going to last me a good week by itself. Add all the vegetables into that. Now, I'll probably be stopping someplace. When I get out to Washington, I'll pick up some refried beans, a box of Spanish rice, you know, something one of the instant job things, more cheese, some black beans. When I cook the, uh, when I, when I cook up this, uh, pork roast, let's see, boneless pork sirloin roast, two and a half pounds. When I cook that up in the, in here and make a pulled pork type thing. I'm going to pick up more tortillas, more of the ingredients, and have another week worth of burritos with pulled pork. Or I could I could take that, put on a put it on a, between two pieces of bread, and put some of this uh, barbecue sauce on it, and make barbecue pulled pork. So between these two, between these two. Uh, me these two uh, types of meats. I'm not going to need to go to the store for two weeks. I get paid every two weeks, which is where this this stuff comes from. Last week, so the ground beef, that pork loin, that was from last week's paycheck. I won't get paid till next week. So, you know, this, this these two meal these two meals are going to stretch for 14 days or more. And then, you know, I can do other things with that. You know, I can put some I can do some rice and vegetables. You know, I can make a I have chicken thighs up here. I can do a chicken soup, chicken stew. I have a, I have uh, almost two pounds of of uh, of uh, a beef up there, you know, a, a good uh, pot ro a chuck roast, and uh, you know I can I can I have enough food on the truck for a long time. So this everybody panicking, buying everything out at Walmart. It doesn't phase me, you know. I have three more canisters of this that are full. Plus, I have some industrial hand wipes out there. You know, I have I have a couple of containers of body wash, shampoo, I have a couple of sticks of, of deodorant. I have plenty of clothes for laundry, so I like to do laundry once every two weeks if I need to. I always have two gallons of water on the truck you know plus I have a lot of boxed uh, you know pasta so like these uh, these uh, Walmart brand it says Sam's Choice this is a Walmart brand you know pre-made box pastas I think I have like four different varieties of this five varieties of this so I can, you know, I can add vegetables to this. I can add meats to this, and really expand this out. This will make two, uh, two servings for me. I mean, it says two servings on here, but you know, that's when you have, you know, a salad and bread and you know everything else with it. So I'm not, I don't have to worry about buying any food 
for another two weeks minimum. And plus, when you have a nice burrito, and you can have it at any moment of the day or night, get back in there. Jumped off my plate. No, it's not too bad. Pardon me. And that's the beauty of the Instant Pot. Even if I did not have the hot plate or the panini grill or the microwave, this Instant Pot, this little three quart, the smallest size they make Instant Pot, I can deep fry in it. I can saute in it. I can make stew, soups. I can roast the you know, chicken in it. I can steam in it. I bought me a little, uh, another insert. When I bought my, uh, when I bought the, uh, the, uh, the nonstick cooking vessel, I also got a little steamer basket for it as well. So I can, you know, I can steam vegetables in here. I can steam a chicken. I can steam, you know, I can make a meatloaf in this and all the fat will drain out the bottom and turn the fat into a gravy to pour over top of it again. I can do that in this. I can dehydrate. I can make it, I can make beef jerky in this if I wanted to. Oh, man. So. Simple recipe of burritos in the truck. Everybody's doing their social distancing. I do the same thing before it was cool. You know? There's some fact I just don't like. I don't, I don't Most people I just don't like. A, a quote that's been going around a lot lately is the, uh, the men in black quote. The person is smart. People are stupid fearful, panicky, you know, I'm paraphrasing, of course. So, you know, the best advice that I could give for anybody during this, during this quote-unquote crisis, A, you don't need any more toilet paper. 14,000 feet of toilet paper is unnecessary. Diarrhea is not a is not a sign that you have the coronavirus. Stocking up on toilet paper isn't going to help anybody. The only thing it's done is put people in the hospital because they're getting in fights at Walmart. You know. Okay, so near where my sister lives in Atlanta, Georgia, a fight broke out over over bottled water. One, these people live with running water in their houses. Why are you buying bottled water? Buy a, a water filter, a little little one of the little pitchers, and filter your water if you have a concern about that. Why are you buying bottled water when you don't need to? But a couple people fighting over a case of bottled water. One of them broke a wine bottle and stabbed the other one. Over freaking water. <laughs> All right, be blood. You have a good one. Yeah, just make sure you have that. But see, I'm one up on everybody. I don't worry about toilet paper. I got the baby wipes. <laughs> so I don't have to worry about it at all. Just make sure if you don't have toilet paper, you make sure you run out and grab yourself some poison ivy. That's the best toilet paper in the world. <laughs> if you don't, if you can't find the poison ivy, some 120 grit sandpaper works just as good. Like I said, it, it, to me, it just makes no sense that. 
like well, like Franklin Delano Roosevelt, one of our presidents said, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. If you if everybody would just stop for five minutes, sit down and actually think of what they need to live, they realize it's not toilet paper. What did human beings do before we had toilet paper? Well, the backwards peoples, the people that were primitive, used this. Well, actually, they actually they used this one, their left hand. That's why it's impolite in most cultures to not shake with your left hand, because they would... That's how they wipe their backsides. That's why the right hand was used to shake, was used to greet people, to eat with. That's why we predominantly use the right hand. That's a cultural thing. Now, some say the Chinese were the first ones to have toilet paper, you know, 3,000 years ago. Which seems to me, if you want to get conspiratorial, they deliberately invented toilet paper 3,000 years ago in hopes that a virus would come up that would make the panicky Western people buy toilet paper and they've cornered the market. <laughs> See, I can play those stupidity games too, so there you go. But, as far as I'm concerned, you have a good burrito in you, there ain't nothing else in the world to uh, worry about. Bacon, burritos, God, and not much more than that. You know, you have those four things, you're, you're good to go. <laughs> I did see a, a, a wonderful uh, billboard today going down the highway. Big, nice, big letters, you know. Bacon, the duct tape of the kitchen. It fixes everything. And I said, I can't argue with it. There's nothing about that, that statement that's wrong. <laughs> you know? You know, you burn the steak, wrap it in bacon, everybody's going to eat it up. You give somebody a salad, you throw some bacon on top of it, I don't care how much of a carnivore you are, you're going to eat that salad. A, a, a disgusting hamburger from Burger King or McDonald's, put a couple strips of bacon on it, everybody's going to gobble it up. Sour cream. Ugh. Well, I guess to each their own there, Mike. Sour cream. It's like yogurt. It's rotten milk. It literally is rotten milk. It's milk that's gone sour. Why would you eat that? <laughs> I'm sorry. I, 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 I guess my... My taste level of taste is in that narrow range right there. I, 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 you know, sour cream is like, why? You have milk to feed the babies. You have milk to dunk your Oreos in. You have milk to make butter. You have milk to make buttermilk to make biscuits and pancakes. You have milk to make ice cream. Everything else is, is is a waste. <laughs> well, I don't know whose idea this was, but I want to thank you very much for having the idea of making some burritos tonight. Now, normally, I would make I would do it all in a pan, but 
I think I'll do it in the Instapot. You know, just a little bit easier, a little bit cleaner. And probably a little bit faster because it's it's all self-contained. So the um, element heats up a little bit better. Yeah, it may be good for you. doesn't mean I have to like it. <laughs> all right. So I've yammered on way more than I probably should have. I'm going to have me another one or two burritos after this one. Then I'm going to be putting all of my uh, veggies into free into uh, vacuum bags. This little circle right here. I'll put a little vacuum pump on that, suck the air out, keep them as fresh as possible. And every day, all I can do is pop a little bit of the meat into the microwave to heat it up. Get a pan out, heat up a tortilla, wrap it up, let the fat trip all over the place, probably down the front of my shirt, whatever. But like I said, over, the, over this next week and a half, two weeks, a lot of beef burritos. When I make that pork, a lot of pork burritos, maybe a pork, maybe a barbecue pork sandwich as well. But, as always, thank you all for coming in. Mike from Trucking in Wyoming, check out his channel. Miss Gina Payne, check out her channel. She does a lot in a van, which is a whole, but she has about four times the space that I have at a minimum. So, but, she is sharing it with two, uh, two cats, I believe it was, or two dogs. I don't know. They're the boss, so they are sharing their place with the human being. So go watch their channel, Van Life with Gina Payne. All right, uh, B Blood, Ross Rums, definitely check out his channel. If you want to see some beautiful shots of London, check out Ross Rums. I, I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed by what he does. Outdoor Adventures by Rudy. Always uh, enjoy him. Let's see here. Uh, uh, who else came in? Mr. Kevin Hart from England as well. Down from in the Cornwall area. Right. And you got Walter from uh, Redneck Lifestyles. Go check him out. He's re, he's redoing a building for a restaurant that he's that he's that he's working on. I believe it's in Winnipeg. I have to ask him exactly where the restaurant is that he's working on. Check out his channel for watch him do that restaurant renovation. Uh, D Dub Wa trucking with Otis. And let's see who else was in here. Uh, Mr. Huber, check you know. Oh, old friend of mine, Dan the Man. Go check them him out as well if he's got Fairy Wire on the road. Go check her out as well. Uh, JBW Vlogs. He just posted a, another video just today, I believe he says. And uh, you know, check him out. Hans Google, I have to check your uh, channel out. So, you know, just check everybody out. See what they have to offer. Hopefully, there's something that benefits you as well. Hopefully, this demonstrates, you know, a simple, simple recipe that most truck drivers will not do. Burritos, they think it's too messy, it's too complicated, blah, blah, blah. It's not. It's all willing. what you're willing to do. So I'm just going to say thank you to each and every one of you for coming in. I do appreciate it. God bless. Just try to take care of yourselves. Take an extra vitamin, a multivitamin. Do like you should have been doing already. Not coughing on people. Not running your nose on people. Not licking everything you see. You know, basic courtesy will get us all through this without turning into zombies. 
cross fingers. You never know. <laughs> so, I'm going to slip into my uh, my alter ego here of normal Robert Simmons, not the superhero trucker you see before you. So, like Superman, take off the, put some glasses on, and you're a different person. <laughs> now everything's all blurry. <laughs> so, I just want to say thank you all for coming in. God bless. I know this normally was going to be on the weekend, but the way things are, the way things are. So, on my way to Walla Walla, Washington, always fun to say, and God bless everybody, and have a good night. I hope to see you with the next vlog, which I'm going to be trying to edit tonight and get posted. It is still months behind. This is going to be uh, November... The 15th and 16th. So, it is hard, sometimes hard to catch up, but I'll do what I can. So, see you all later. God bless. Thank you all for coming.